Welcome back to another CG Figures tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make phospholipids in Blender and then turn them into a cell. So go ahead and delete your default cube and replace it with an icosphere. We're going to make sure this icosphere has four subdivisions and then we'll come to front view by hitting one on the number pad. Zoom in, tab into edit mode, hit Alt A to deselect everything and then making sure you're selecting verts, grab one vert here and one vert just about there, holding down shift so that you can grab both. Hit Control plus once and that will select the extended hexagons. We're then going to come into a perspective view, hit E to extrude and pull out till just about there. Hit S, Y and 0 to flatten those and then extrude a few more times. Once, twice and just about three times. There we go. We're going to start shading and adding modifiers pretty much immediately because there's some defects that we have to touch on. So right click and shade smooth. Come over to the Modifier Properties tab and add in a subdivision surface of 1. You can also keep it to 1 in the render because you won't really need too many. These are going to be quite small in the final scene. Now this is going to be our polar head and these will be our non-polar tails. And so we need these to have different materials. Go ahead and start by adding in one material. I'm going to call this blue and we'll just use that for the head of the material. We'll shift into Material Preview mode and we want these tails to be red. So I'm going to add a second material with the plus sign here and we'll just make this a very simple red. To assign it to these tails, we'll tab back into edit mode and you can see we've already got these faces selected. So we'll hit control plus once, twice, three times until we have just about this selected. Go ahead now and click assign with the red material and you'll notice our problem right away. If we zoom in, you can see there's this ugly little shading problem. So we're gonna fix that. Come to edit mode and Hit Control R to put a loop cut just about here on your tail. Bring it right in, and if you were to bring it all the way in, you'd see we'd get this kind of hexagon, which is not quite what we want. So drag it to just about here, and then on the other side, hit 3 for face select, Alt, and click on one of these vertical, or rather horizontal, edges. Once you've done that, you'll see it selects all the faces around there. We're going to come to the blue material, and now we'll assign the blue material. And you can see what that's done is that it's extended the blue just a little bit out because of the subdivision. So hit 2 for edges, Alt and click this edge again, and then double tap G so that you can slide that up. Once you've done that, Control R in the middle of the red section, and then just drag this in again. And now we actually have a much smoother, more circular looking edge, just like that. So we'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Tab back into edit mode, Control R in the middle here to add the loop cut, bring it in, 3 for face select, Alt and there, assign the blue material, put another loop cut into the red section and drag that in until it's closer to the body. We can also drag this edge in by double tapping G again just to get it a little bit closer. And so that's going to give us our basic phospholipid, our polar head and our nonpolar tail. Now, this is a little bit boring, we want to add some interest to it. So we're going to go ahead, tab into edit mode, and hit Z and come into wireframe. And just draw boxes over these, come into a perspective view, and hit G and just move around a little bit. These don't have to be perfect and they don't have to look like anything in particular. You want this to just be a little bit disordered to kind of show something that's free floating. And that should do fine. You can also move them up and down if you want. Now. This is a phospholipid. We're going to call it that. However, when we want to make a cell or use this in a particle system, we need a phospholipid bilayer, namely two. So the way that we're going to do that is tab into edit mode, hit A to select everything, shift D to duplicate it in edit mode, hit Y to lock it in the Y axis, drag it out until just about here, then hit R, X, and 180 degrees to spin it around, G, Y, and bring it further out. And if you want, you could also now on the other side, again, grab these, move them around a little bit, and this will just be for a little bit of visual interest. So that's going to be just fine. I'm going to use these as my phospholipids. You'll notice right now that the center of mass for this is located in the first icosphere. So if we were to try and rotate, it would rotate around that area. We actually want to be between the two, so we're just going to right click, and for set origin, we're going to go with origin to geometry. And now you can see that if we rotate again, we're rotating about the midsection. Awesome. Grab that, move it out of the way, and that is going to be our phospholipid for creating our cell. 
Okay, so the last cell that I tried to make, there were just too many particles with subdivisions and it didn't actually record, so we're going to do this a little differently. I've just disabled the subdivision surface on the phospholipids and we're now going to make our cell. So shift A, add in an icosphere. Make sure it has about five subdivisions. We want it to be pretty close packed. Hit one to come into front view, zoom in, and then tab to edit mode, Z, wireframe, and drag a box over the top half of the vertices. Hit X and delete those vertices. We now have the bottom half of an icosphere with 1,321 vertices. You do want to use an icosphere over, say, a UV sphere because this is going to give kind of the highest density of closest packed verts, and that's going to make the particle system look better. So tab into object mode, come to particle properties, and then add in a new particle system, namely a hair particle system with 1,321 for the number. We're going to omit from the verts, Check the modifier stack and uncheck random order. For render as, we're going to use object, and then the object that we're going to use is of course our phospholipid. You can see that's way too big, so we'll bring that down till just about 0.01, and that is not bad. So in material preview mode, we can see there is our basic cell. We're going to uncheck show emitter for both render and viewport display, and now the icosphere is hidden, but we can see all of our phospholipids forming that nice phospholipid bilayer and making a cell-like object. There are two quick little things that we're going to do here just to improve this, and one is we're going to come up to the advanced options in particle settings. We're then going to enable rotation, increase the phase, and increase randomize phase. So you can now see all the little tails have started to twist so that they are sort of intermeshed in a more random chaotic way that makes it a little bit more believable. From here, the last thing we're going to do is, remember we enabled the modifier stack, so we're going to come back, add a modifier, and the modifier we're going to add is a displacement. We'll put that above the particle settings, add a new texture, and then come down to the texture properties tab and choose clouds. Now this is obviously chaotic, but we're going to bring that size up to about 2.3 to start, and then we'll adjust the size just a little bit until you see the spheres start to look a little bit more cooperative and we're also going to come and adjust the strength and we'll bring that down until it's a bit more subtle. So now we have something that's a little distorted and also has the particles in the right place. The last thing that we can do is just try and use the normal arrangement for the orientation axes and that will actually clean this up just a little bit further. Once all that's done you now have your basic cell. So we have our phospholipids, we have them arranged in a cell. You can change the colors at any time by coming to the materials. You can change the cell size by scaling it up and then adjusting the scale of the phospholipids in the particle settings appropriately to match. And of course, you can also change the displacement very subtly by just warping it here with the strength for either a perfect circle or something a little bit more distorted. And you can again change the displacement there. The only other thing that we can do, that I like to do at least for this, is if you want you can add in a wave modifier, put that above the particle system, and then you can just go ahead and hit play here, and you'll see that the cell will actually oscillate. If we disable one axis we can get to wave across, and if you freeze frame it on any particular moment, you might get something a little interesting and you know change the height to make it a bit more subtle. So as always, thanks for coming out. If you found this useful, consider subscribing, sharing with your friends and colleagues, and until next time, have yourself a great old day.